the Joe Rogan experience. So when when you're touring with this music now, and you're fucking with it, and you're switching things up, like when will you decide that it's time to write some new shit? Will you just tour and then stop touring and then? Well, I'm always writing poetry. Um, Do you I, write? I anymore. I used to sit down with a guitar and like I'm gonna write this song. You get like a a part and words, and you find meter and phrase. I've discovered I'm really just a poet. It's easier to write the words out and craft the meter and phrase to those words musically in the studio. Um, I would say both, all the other three records, I would probably wrote half of them while you go in to make the record. You think you have the songs, and you realize that those songs are not supposed to be a part of this record, and I would go home at night and write songs that fit that record. Um, where I would come in with parts, like Sailor's Got, I had a lot of parts of music that get pieced together in the studio. And these guys probably all thought I was fucking insane. Fer it scared Ferg to death, because he, he's like, I want to hear the songs. I was like, I got some notes, you know. But really, the music happens, you lock yourself in that room with the right people for a matter of days, and you just keep going until it's done. And you have ideas in the moment. But now I don't even pick a guitar up to write. I just write what I want to say, what I'm feeling. And then these guys, you know, push and encourage and motivate me to try to do the other thing as well as I'm able. So are, you, are you writing longhand? Are you writing on a computer? Yeah. No, I write. I always write it. You always write, write it out with your hand? Like, yeah. You know, I have notepads, and I'll go through and just scribble out sections or pick this can fit with this. This record was very uh, deconstructed, I guess. We did some loops and we would like record riffs in a certain key and then record that same riff in every other key so I could take it and chop it to a loop and make it super precise like a hip hop album. And then some stuff was just live as fuck, you know. And you're just having fun. We had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. The improvisational part of it sounds terrifying. That's but awesome. That's but you, awesome. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah I mean, right. sometimes you get something if it's a melodic hook or something the first take it's usually the one you keep you know yeah and you go back and try to make it perfect and it's not as cool so we and we knew that having done this before so with these sessions we went that was the only rule there was no second guessing or indecision hence the samurai films on the wall because mm. like in a sword fight you got one fucking move you know what i mean and that was like that was the mo for these sessions like the first thing is doesn't matter if it's the right thing it's the thing so when you're doing that and you're recording things do you do you pause and go listen to it and play it again how do you how do you guys do it uh, some not some, I mean, it depends it depends you know if, if it sounds cool like bobby said then you probably just keep it and if you're like and eh, it didn't really work try something else yeah. you know most of his solos on the record were like first second take i mean chuck i don't think i've ever fucking punched a single thing in chuck's life chuck's just, perfect like, he just kills it he's the man <laughs> um but bob i've got a bunch of videos somewhere on a computer like i made him <laughs> record all of his solos with a joint in his mouth well the, like the intro thing they were like we yeah. need a thing for this and i was like well i need a i need a doobie need and a doobie. i smoked it and i just played that part. i have some like, of those videos too on my so phone from that <laughs> point on every time he played he had, he had a joint in his mouth so he was like not just thinking about the music it was like so, you know anything to just settle and it, it was it was pretty it was fun sweet. i mean we were kind of just we were fucking wasted <laughs> You know, just kind of like doing the Arsenio. While we're ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> yeah, can you get too high and play music? Um, only if you have Sturgeon to remember parts. I'm still trying. <laughs> He's He's always. What did you say? So you said you want to get so high you don't even know what chord you're playing. Yeah, I don't want to know what song we're playing. I was like, yeah. No, the, the problem is like we get so high when we record that and then we have to remember that live or relearn it. And oh. then if you get high live, you can't remember what you played high when you record. It. <laughs> that is an issue. So Some then do you go back shit. and listen to recordings and go, what? Yeah. What, what was that? The what fuck were we doing? I mean, we had to, I had to go back after before rehearsals. This was a really weird thing. It's never happened. I went from mixing and like processing, looking at this film for the past year to now we have to like learn these songs. So you're fi you're actually like paying attention to what you did there, or played these chords. I was like, why the fuck did I do that? You know, just so weird. That and we did it so relatively quick, quicker than the other stuff that we did shit. You know, we we yeah, we had to learn it all over again because I, I, we didn't remember doing any of it. It was just so creative and quick like that. You know? They hadn't heard any of the songs since we recorded them until I sent them the record three weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know. 
Is it surreal going and listen to all of it after it's all pieced together? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for, me, for me, it was, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like riding a bike, though, really, you know, especially not playing in a year. <clears throat> we know each other, you know, just jump back on it, you know. I'm still catching things in the recordings that I have. don't play live. I'll hear little bits and things still. So wow, I got a question. When you're when you're in the studio with them, are you in producer mode because you've produced other artists, or are you kind of are they kind of producers with you and you guys are finding it together? Oh man, I couldn't I couldn't tell these guys to do what they do. Why would I? I mean. I don't want to work with people. I want to work with the guys that just do shit that amazes me. Um, but no, I'm not like, I have a rough structure in my head of what, the, what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, I guess, I don't know. You, my, maybe you guys should answer that question. Yeah. I mean, you said it, but you, you have an idea of what you want, but you, you kind of give us the reins. Yeah. If, if, if it, it sucks, sucks, I tell them, tell us. you know, but yeah, I give you, them, I give them an like, opportunity to not fuck up. You'll say like, you know, a Wu Tang <laughs> vibe or something. Yeah. And then, you know, Tang vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely I have like the idea of the sound I'm chasing, and it's hard to articulate. Mm. Um, but with this, it was just I realized like maybe by the end of the second day we were doing something I know I hadn't really heard before, or maybe I was hearing like 15 of my favorite records all at the same time. I was just like, okay, this is what this is going to be, and it's probably going to destroy my career, and that's okay because. <laughs> This is fuck. I like it. <laughs>